Hello world, welcome back. As you can tell, I've been a little busy. I just put that up. You know what, it doesn't look so bad. It's my first time. I can tell you how not to do it. None of this stuff is mine. The only thing that is mine, uh, you can't really see very well. If you notice my recent community tab post that I posted last night, late last night, I, I am getting back into electronics. Uh, it is a bit of a mess. This is an airplane. I know. It doesn't look like much, but this is the components. These are the components. See, I've been back in America for like three years and I'm still not good at English. These are the components uh, for a basic flying wing. And I was inspired many years ago to do this because it seemed like an easy project to follow. However, I was so wrong. I had no idea what was going on. I think it's easy for people who are familiar with making their own airplanes. I always wanted to make my own airplane. I always thought that was so badass, you know? You buy the pieces, you slap them together, because they, they come in these components now and you can just buy them, you know, really cheap and just slap them together. But it was a much bigger challenge than I ever expected. However, I'm doing it. I may have fried this board. This is the second board that I purchased and this is an outdated kind of older board. So I don't know if it'll work with current software. I'll have to have to find out, but that is my reintroduction to electronics. Basically, I took a break. I went the 3D printing route and I will primarily be running the Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, this little thing right here. It's only like four bucks. Get a legit one. Don't get them on Amazon. They're selling like two for $27. That's a rip off. Okay. Whatever you save in shipping, you're still paying more for the actual product and it's not guaranteed to be a legit board. I'm just saying, just be careful. I've been burned with stuff before trying to buy it on Amazon. I get my stuff at pieshop.us. They have a pieshop.ca for people in Canada. It's a great shop. Um, just get it wherever you need to, Adafruit, wherever you need to. And I will be doing some simple builds. I, I, you know, the problem with me is I'm not engineer brained. I'm not engineer inclined. And so I get, I'm, I'm very conceptual. So I have these concepts and I can see how everything works together. But the problem is executing and following through with that takes a lot of time. And especially if you're learning on the go, as you do it, 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 a lot, you know, life gets in the way and maybe you ruin some components along the way. So I don't recommend doing that way. And a question that I get asked a lot on this channel and by people visiting the website is, what is this? Like what, what is mechatronics, robotics, electronics? What is the difference between all of them? Um, electronics traditionally, uh, was the study and, and the, the practice of assembling components together, uh, like capacitors, switches, and you know, power sources like batteries and electricity, and basically managing the flow of electricity to do work, to perform work. And then they started coming out with sensors and affordable components like you see on this board. All of these are like modules. They're like components that are packaged, ready to go. You don't have to do any of the hard work that people used to do when it was called electronics. And most people, when they search for electronics, they come up with consumer electronics, like, you know, this shit, okay? This is what people think of when they think of electronics. It is electronics. However, look how comp this, look, come on. This is not what we're interested in. So it's hard to find the right search term if you're interested in learning this very complicated, high barrier to entry hobby, unless you go to school for it. And I'm just not that way. I'm more, I like to talk to people, okay? Uh, I'm more of the uh, front end, like face-to-face uh, -face customer interaction type, and I like to talk about concepts and ideas. So that's just how my brain is wired. These modules that you can buy from places like Adafruit and SparkFun, they're great because it makes it a lot easier for people like you and me. The other term uh, that people use is robotics, of course, and that is, you know, remote control or, you know, a wired control of something uh, on the other end, generally speaking. And you're gonna be dealing with servos, of course. That's like the first thing that comes to people's mind is, you know, controlling a thing with four wheels and, you know, the, the little sound sensor or the infrared sensor on the front and making it not bump into the wall. That's what a lot of people imagine. That There's a lot of kits for that. However, I think a lot of people have 
bigger plans, bigger ideas, and they really want to build something really cool. And that's why that Iron Man character was so popular. And it was just like a fire that just spread all across the internet for a couple of years. And uh, most people, what they got out of it was, you know, 3D printed cosplay. That's, that's the extent, you know, they have the servo operated stuff that, you know, comes out and that's cool and all. But I think what people are looking for is something that's functional. Um, but the problem is if you're a one man team, it's tough stuff. You can see that I am dedicated to the journey of discovering in a self-taught way how to go about designing, you know, 3D cases and, and models and, and stuff like that, that can work with, has a potential to work on its own, you know, as a product, standalone product, or as, um, you know, a, a supplement to uh, electronics projects. So what I ran into was the term mechatronics, and you probably heard this before, and mechatronics is like a broad term that kind of combines a multidisciplinary field. Uh, it, it's people who are interested in electronics, mechanics, computing, um, and it's generally referring to, you know, large scale automation, uh, you know, like assembly lines and stuff like that with machines and all, all that kind of stuff. They want people who can speak the, the language and know the culture of robotics, electronics, a little, you know, the coding that goes into it. They want people who have this overall understanding of all of that so it makes it easier to scale and maintain their you know automated machines basically so that's what that is i get that question a lot and it is confusing because the term that most people are using that are in the hobbyist end of this is maker but the problem with the term maker and i've always had a problem with it. i didn't like the term for a long time because it it doesn't really tell you much maker can include you know Etsy moms making stuff with their cricket machines. It can entitle people that are interested in electronics, people that do 3D printing, people that make their own clothes. I mean, technically that is all in the maker category. If you search for maker and, and you know, on, online in like Google Trends or just in a Google search, you're gonna come across all kinds of stuff. It, it's just crafts, you know, DIY. It's a fancy word for crafts, basically. And that kind of bugs me. I wish there was more of, um, I, w I wish there was a more defined term for the electronics crowd. Um, I don't know, maybe mechatronics is it, but you know, mechatronics is kind of, it, it just has that super engineering, you know, angle to it. And so that's kind of the way that I interpret it. And if you interpret it differently, good for you.